picture on Oklahoma's offensive line in 2024 got a bit clearer this week. Let's break it down. I'm Eli Letterman, sellout crowd's Oklahoma beat writer, and I'm here with Sam Mays, my sellout crowd colleague and the former All-American offensive lineman from Oklahoma State. Sam, we are here to talk about Garen Hatchett, the transfer guard from Washington who committed to the Sooners on Monday. He's going to be a fifth-year junior uh, with 25 games under his belt headed into the 2024 season. 12 games in 2023, made four starts. It was a, a, an important piece in that uh, Washington offensive line, even just as kind of a reserve guy who filled in. And he'll come to the Sooners with two seasons of eligibility. So we're here to talk about his fit with the Sooners, what his game is like, strengths, weaknesses, all that. But Sam, your initial impressions on Garen Hatchett as the Sooners get a guy who presumably is going to fill an important need at, at a position you and I have spoken a lot about uh, where the Sooners have work to do in 2024. So I'm I'm excited about Mr. Uh, Mr. Is it Hackett, right? Garen Hackett. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty pumped about uh, this acquisition for the Oklahoma Sooners. You know, I'm, I played the position of right guard. I think true right guards are a lot like enforcers or goons, right? This is your hockey goon. This is a guy that is very very physical at the point of attack. You know, the guy that you're looking to go third and you know third and two, you know, right side strong side type of mentality. And I think this kid kind of brings that to the field the first things that just pop off like the first things that popped off the page to me were one he gets it right he understands it if you can see how cerebral he is as he gets to the line of scrimmage he's super vocal talking to his center talking to his tackle he didn't make any mistakes and then his technique is very good right so like each and every play people don't realize offensive line play is is inter it's small detail work right like it's a six inch settle step and it's another six inch crotch step and like your hands have got to be placed in the right spot and your head's got to be in the right spot and every play that I've watched him run over the two games I've watched this morning this kid is doing the right thing right his he's attempting to do the right thing his footsteps are leading him down the right path and so I I love the fact that it just seems like from a cerebral standpoint he very much understands this is what you get when you know this kid's been sitting in meeting rooms for five for four years right he might not have played a lot of football but he sure as heck has absorbed a ton. And so as far as his technique and, and him understanding the game, understanding the defense, knowing who to block, who to pick up, when he's free, you know, when he can move around the pocket because no one's over top of him, who he's going to go help with, he, he understands all of those things. So I was super pumped right off the bat about just watching this kid think his way through the game. And I thought he did an excellent job doing that. Uh, next thing that pops, you know, just off the page to me is his arm length. He's got extremely long arms. It really kind of reminded me of me. Uh, you know, I, I played tackle uh, coming into Oklahoma State, but I moved into guard. One of my, you know, attributes that I what really helped me a lot in the interior was I just had tackle arm length, right? So keeping a defender or defensive uh, tackle off of you, being able to keep that distance from their body to yours always is helpful because it's more of a play football in a phone booth mentality down inside so i love his body overall i love the way that he looks love the way that he moves you love him in the run game you love him at the second level uh i thought he was and i'd love a guy that wants to clear the pocket right so in passing downs he's an uncovered guard he sets back and the first thing he does is look to the inside the next thing he does is look to go help his tackle out if he can get out there and help his tackle he's looking to break ribs right i love a guard that wants to break somebody's ribs when he's un when he's uncovered uh, and pass protection. So this to me is what the, this should look like for Oklahoma in a transfer portal, right? This is the kind of kid, obviously it was a Joe Moore winning, award-winning offensive line. The kid that played in front of him was a little bit better than he was this year, just the reality of the situation. But this kid's going to come in with two years of eligibility and be ready to play some football. So this is an exciting acquisition. Uh, jumps off the page immediately. Looks like he's a day one starter for Oklahoma. I can't imagine that anybody's going to uh, I mean, he'll get pushed. Don't get it wrong. I mean, there's a bunch of dudes that are athletic there at OU and good football players, but this kid looks like he's the favorite for that position, for, in my opinion. Yeah, I want to get to his fit within like the broader context of the Sooners' offensive line and that depth chart next. But like going into his backstory, he's a guy from Ferndale, Washington. So he's from out there. His little brother followed him uh, to Washington, so they were both there, and that was kind of part of this transfer story. Was they both hit the portal uh, after? Kalen DeBoer left for Alabama. Landon's going to hang back at Washington and, and looks like a dude for them who they're going to you know perhaps uh, turn to this coming season to start. 
Um, but when we're talking about Garen Hatchett, you're, you're talking about a dude you mentioned has been around. This is going to be his fifth year in college football in 2024. He didn't play his first two seasons, played 13 games in 2022. And then this past year, you know, 12 games, four starts, but he was the sixth most used guy on the Joe Moore, Moore award-winning offensive line. And he was the guy they turned to. And you mentioned the guys in front of him. Uh, on that offensive line, you had two guys who were headed to the NFL draft, one who's headed to Alabama with Kalen DeBoer, and two more who, when they hit the portal, uh, hit went to Ole Miss as two of the most coveted uh, offensive linemen in the portal. And so that's what he was behind, but that's also the unit that he fit in really well with. And so he's, you know, he, he's done this before. He was playing it at the very highest level this year. Uh, and, and to your point, he comes in uh, as a guy who should probably compete to start right away at, at right guard, a, a position to need on this offensive line that's turning over so much for the Sooners. Um, and ideally, kind of that right mix of, of a veteran, but a guy who maybe still has his best college football in front of him, someone they can get their hands on, Bill Biedenboe, you know, the, the, the cliches uh, come yeah. easily, that Bill Biedenboe is a, a guy who can mold uh, offensive linemen into something bigger. My a question for you, you talk about his size and, and kind of his build, 303 pounds, six foot four. Is that your typical guard size? Are, are, are we typically seeing guards a little bit bigger? Uh, I mean, and, and does that impact the game? You can definitely see him a little bit bigger. You know, I, I probably played somewhere around 325 to 330 pounds. Uh, this league also was significantly different at that time. You know, like it, we played against some pretty massive uh, defensive tackles. He's going to see some big guys there in the South. But the way that his, he plays with great leverage and the way his body is built, you know, he's got a short inseam. You can tell his legs aren't necessarily extremely long. So when he squats down, he squats down real low. Guys like that just need to play with great leverage, which which he does. He fires off the ball low, low center gravity, low pad level, uses hands well in the run game. If I could complain about anything, it would probably be the way that he uses his hands in the passing game. He's not much of a striker in pass protection. And I think a lot of it is because his arms are so long. And when you have that type of... You know, when you have a built-in asset, when you have a built-in a part of your body that helps you block, especially in the high school days, you know, that kid extends his arm, a defensive lineman runs into him, well, he's got him at two and a half feet from his body. So rarely do you see those guys have great punches off the line of scrimmage because they're so used to just kind of gathering defenders instead of really striking them. Well, in this league, he's going to have to start striking, right? He's going to really have to start settling in and then really giving a, a hard punch punch to the middle of the chest to get, you know, get, you got to get a shot on these defenders to, to stop that initial pass rush right off the bat. So I think he will have to improve there um, for sure. But I, I don't look at, you know, I, by the time he gets done with Schmitty this year, I can't imagine that he's not going to be somewhere around 315 uh the 320 and he he's he'll be on campus right now right like he'll have yep, this way I mean, we're we're talking tuesday afternoon as i understand it he was set to fly to norman on tuesday uh today yeah. so uh whenever you're listening to this folks like he's he's already on campus and so you're talking about already in the workouts yeah off-season program spring camp summer yeah. fall camp between jerry schmidt and the strength program between bill biedenboe and you know those maybe working out those kinks that the things that you've identified as as places to improve they're going to have that opportunity and i think you know sam the last time we talked about oklahoma's offensive line uh which again they're going to be replacing starters at all five positions really six bona fide starters um that are off the roster from 2023 it was kind of a bleak outlook it was looking at uh you know the the depth that was going to be here of returning guys of mostly unproven really jacob sexton being the only one uh who's who's been a starter at any point in his ou career and then a cast of transfers that I think you you identified some potential in, certainly with Spencer Brown at tackle. and uh, But on the whole, a, a unit that had you concerned. We're talking about Fabechi Wiwu and, uh, and Michael Tarquin coming from USC. This would seem to be the most instant impact, easy to plug in starter of any of the, the transfer additions the Sooners have made up front. No question. No question. I think this kid is is absolutely somebody that's going to come in and, you know, when they call starting offensive line, if I was him, I would walk up to the very front immediately and, and lay it down. I think he's got that kind of instant impact ability. You know, you look at this thing shaping up now, if you say, is it hatchet, right? Or hatchet. hatchet. Yeah, yeah. Hatchet. Like the, like the axe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So you say hatchet. NIL deal there for him. 100 percent 
Um, if he's if Hatchet is plugged in at the right guard, you know, and and then I think a tackle. I think the Brown kid is intriguing to me. Like if they had another tackle that Brown didn't have to play tackle, I'd love to see him play guard. I think he's also one of those guys that could move inside and be pretty happy there. Now some of these tackles get caught up in, you know, the tackles a big money position in the NFL and people want to play it. Um, and so some guys don't like moving inside. I was one that just loved it. I was, this is what, this is a much better situation for me, but I like Brown. I think he's going to find a home. I think the every kid starts at the center spot. Sexton is a player, you know, you get one, one, uh, gimme like, like hatchet is. And all of a sudden this whole thing, you know, levels out a little bit as, as far as the, the athletes that are on the field and they still got to come together and they got to play together. You could have five great offensive linemen that all play like individuals. And guess what? That doesn't work, right? You can have five studs that don't like each other and don't play well together. And your team is going to suck. You got to get five guys that work well together, but you got to start somewhere. And to me, you know, this is a great addition to this to this group, a real stabilizing piece there in the middle. Yeah, and like like you said, it it takes one guy to make you feel just better about everything around him. There, there's 100%. still a lot to sort out here, but you, the the picture becomes clear. Spencer Brown and Garen Hatchett makes for a pretty good right side. You have Troy Everett in there who's now an experienced guy. He'll, he'll be taking most of his first center snaps at OU, but you know he's played the position before. And then Jacob Sexton on, at left tackle could be someone. We, we know that they feel good about Norman. And then you're talking about that left guard spot. Still a lot of work to do there. Still work to do in terms of depth. You, know, you can never predict injuries, performance, things like that. But the picture gets clearer and I think brighter for OU's offensive line with this move. And the and fact is they're probably not done. Uh, this move, it's worth pointing out the direct uh, result of how, you know, a coaching departure and that 30 day window guys get uh, on those programs. You know, Kalen DeBoer leaves for Alabama. That opened the door uh, for Garen Hatchett to, to make his move. Uh, we should be toward the end of those. Michigan looks like they're going to keep things pretty intact. Uh, we haven't seen that flood uh, after Jim Harbaugh's departure and Sharon Moore being promoted. But uh, you know, still some time in this portal window. There's the spring window, which is typically a thinner pool, but you never know. I think the Sooners are going to continue to look to add here because this is probably the biggest trouble spot on the roster, but one that's looking a whole lot better uh, after Garen Hatchett's commitment this week. So Sam, thank you for jumping on to talk about this stuff, breaking it down. Always fun talking O-line yeah, with you. It, Folks, come back to Sell Out Crowd where we're going to have more on development developments like this at OU you'll hear more from me on the Letterman jacket Sam holds it down on in the trenches and a big thank you before we head out to our producer Jacqueline Musgrove for making all this happen stay tuned at selloutcrowd.com